welcome to Room 101. My guest tonight is a legend in the world of show business. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Scylla Black. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Take a seat. <coughs> well, so first of all, thank, uh, thank you for appearing on the show. A huge welcome to Room 101. Well, thank you for asking me. It's, uh, you know, it's so unusual for me to rant and rave. I'm so looking forward to having a <laughs> rant tonight. So are you somebody who, who, who finds that you get easily annoyed by things in life? No, I haven't. You know, I've always been Mrs. Nicey, but since becoming a pensioner, yeah. you know, I feel as if I can do anything that I want to, and I do. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's have a look at your first choice. This is, um, this is weather forecasters. Oh, I do. Don't get me started. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get me started. I hate the weather. You know, Britain, we're living in Britain, for goodness yeah. sake. We know. We wake up in the morning, we look outside, and we look up at the sky. If the sun's out, it's going to be sunny. If it's yeah. cloudy, it's going to rain. Yeah. And it really gets on my nerves. <laughs> <laughs> and the weather comes on every 15 minutes, doesn't it? I hate that even more. Do you? <laughs> because, look, you know, I'm getting on, but I can remember what you said 15 minutes ago. You know, there's going to be sunny in the morning. Take your umbrella out in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. You can do all that. Yeah, yeah. No, I hate it. I hate it. And I hate it. <laughs> especially. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do, especially when, look, British people especially. Yeah. What is the second question when you're phoning somebody either in Europe or maybe up in Liverpool, as I do all mm. the time? How's the pregnancy test? <laughs> <laughs> oh, the second question, no. Um, what's the weather like? No, when you ask how they are, which is probably after yeah, the pregnancy exactly, yeah. test. And then you say, what's the weather like when yeah. you're up there? Yeah. And it's terrible. I think it's got to go. And the one thing that really gets on my wick, yeah. you know, is these gorgeous weather girls mm. and they're usually pregnant aren't yeah. they? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they're fabulous and you know, they look, that, it, how dare they look that fabulous mm. at six o'clock in the mm. morning. Weather forecasters of course always get the blame when the weather's not going according to their predictions. Let's have a look at <laughs> Wincy Willis from TVAM. Oh Wincy. Yeah, she got quite upset when viewers suggested that her, her weather forecasting wasn't as good as it could be. Okay, so it's snowing in Grantham, all right. I'm up to my armpits here and call us from Grantham. You must be shoveling your way out. I don't know. All I can do is tell you what I get from the weather, Cedric. And here it says the morning will be cloudy and misty in the east and southeast. Not a mention of snow. I'm sorry. I do my best. But you don't care. I get hurt and upset. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, well, that do you. All right. You've got 12 foot drifts by this afternoon, if that keeps up. It's not all right. <laughs> I'm sorry about this. Don't take it personally, but apparently somebody's rung in to say that you said it was going to be sunny in Leicester and it's snowing, and you said it's going to be misty in Northampton <laughs> and it's also snowing. <laughs> I'll tell you what to do. Ring the London Weather Centre. Because I'm going to win a minute. <laughs> <laughs> so she was fabulous. Yes, yeah, she you liked it. See, her, that's you? how the weather should be done. You know, get it wrong. Yes. I mean, bring back Michael Fish. He was yes. fabulous. He was. You always oh. knew where you were with him. Well, <laughs> well, you didn't actually. Ducking that was from a hurricane. At this. <laughs> I love that. Didn't you just yeah. love that? Yeah. No problems. Wasn't that fabulous? It was hilarious. It was great. Yeah. And we all woke up the next day. Yeah. And threw back the curtains and you yeah. had no conservatory or your greenhouse no. <laughs> half the trees were down. Yeah. I, well, yeah. But we all laughed Michael. at Michael Fish getting it wrong. Yes. <laughs> yeah. That's the way it should be. Yes. Everybody's so smug these days. Mm. No. I what think... did you think people did before weather forecasts? You think the tallest man in the village said it started raining? <laughs> There were those people, weren't there, when, you know, the sort of like the sprouts didn't come up or anything like yes, that. Yes, exactly, yeah. Yeah, yes. bring back that. No, yeah. that's too technical now. If you hang a bit of seaweed outside your window, if it's, been, if it's wet, it's been raining. <laughs> <laughs> uh, some television stations, of course, have attempted to make the weather forecast much more interesting. Have a look at this. Now then, up at the Midlands, a lovely day for you as well. Hey, I'm bringing great news to you today. Yes, you've got nine degrees and no rain. Jumping up the north. Hey, look, that's <laughs> incredible. You've got 10 degrees. And look, again, those lovely white, fluffy clouds up the north, it looks. Well, up in Scotland, hoots, man, you've got some windy gales, I'm afraid. And you've got a lovely 10 degrees. This will be rusting off, bouncing off. Bye! <laughs> 
Rusty Goff there, no mention of the earthquake that's clearly going on while he's uh, <laughs> doing the weather forecast. Now, that at six o'clock in the morning would make me reach for a bucket. They also do, they've also in the past done topless weather forecasts. You can't remember what they're saying, but you can tell whether it's going to be cold or not. <laughs> How would you like to see the weather presented then? How would you like it to be done? Oh, not at all. Not at all? Absolutely not at all. Because weather is weather. It's going to happen mm. whether you say it is or isn't. Yes, exactly, exactly. Mm. OK, well... Um, is it going in there then? Um, well, there's one way of answering you. And uh, the, yes, weather forecasters are definitely going into room 101. Oh! In they go. Well done. <laughs> <All right. laughs> So, uh, OK, Silla, what does this represent? <laughs> your, your next choice? That's a shout at me, um, do you know who I am? People who say, do you know who I am? Uh -huh. Yeah, can't stand them. Because if they, if they have to say, do you know who I am, obviously they don't know who they are. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like kind of using your celebrity status to... You know, get one up on Joe Public, and mm. I, that's not fair. I mm. don't like that. So you say, I mean, you, you know, it's about people who are famous or think they're, they're famous, and they're saying, you know, do you know who I am? Um, can you remember what it was like not to be famous? Because you've been famous for a long time now, haven't you? Uh, well, I was 18 years of age when I was not famous. Mm. Mm. And uh, we, I, we didn't have a phone in our house in Liverpool, and I didn't know anybody who had phones. And I remember Brian Epstein saying, to find out that you're number one, I'm in London, I'm going to call you. And I said, well, where are you going to call me? Because, you know, we're not on the phone. I said, well, hang on, you know, there's a telephone chaos by the 27 bus stop. Uh, I'll go there at, <laughs> at one o'clock. And that's where I went, stood by. And I was hoping and praying this woman would get off the phone so Brian Epstein could call me. Because she probably had a number three record and he was just talking <laughs> to her. <laughs> you. <laughs> probably. But that's how I found out I was number one, so standing a, at the number 27 bus. So in a way, you sort of, you came out of the phone box famous, in a sense. I did, and it was incredible because I, I celebrated in Liverpool and the next day I was going up to Scotland. Mm -hmm. And that's when I felt, oh gosh, they know me, because I was sitting on the train and I was all over the, the press and the guy opposite me kept on looking at me and looking at the paper and looking up at me and I, I thought he was a pervert, actually. Mm. <laughs> and then I realised, gosh, I'm famous. That's mm. when I knew I'd mm. really Even perverts are recognising me. <laughs> 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 Let's have a look at somebody trying to be more famous than they actually are. Here's Ricky Gervais. Sorry, can, I'm getting a bit of hassle out here. Can I just pop myself down there? Well, not really. This is a VIP section. Can you just step away from the road, please, sir? No, I know. I was in there a minute ago. I was a VIP a minute ago. What happened? There's nothing I can do, sir. Sorry. Look, can you just step away from the road? Yeah. Yeah. Come on, I've got more in common with David Bowie than this rabble. How'd you work that out? Well, we're both entertainers. We've both done something with our lives. I'm just... I don't think you can equate yourself to David Bowie. He's one of the seminal artists of the last 35 years doing work turned him out the genius. Whereas you've just made a camp catchphrase based comedy. Just got a bad review of a bouncer. No, I just know what I like. Yeah, do you like money? Sorry? Do you like money? 20 quid. Sorry, you're trying to bribe me to sit next to David Bowie now. I'm giving you 20 quid to sit there with spare seats. No. 50. 50 quid? Yeah. Let's see it. You've got a 10, I've only got 20. Is that? It's either 40 or 60 then. Or 60 then. 60 then. <laughs> so who have you heard say, do you know who I am? I, I'm not going to say the name, but okay. I... OK. What, uh... what are the initials? <laughs> what does it sound like? No, 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 I wouldn't do that. I was actually in Barbados. Ah. Uh -huh. Was it Michael Winner? No! <laughs> <laughs> Although he would say that. He would, absolutely, yeah. He would totally say mm, that. Mm. No, what? Well, it, no, it wasn't him. And it was some uh -huh. one very famous trying to get an upgrade. Right. This person that he or she was travelling with. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And in the end, they said, do you know who I am? And the worst thing in the world was, you know, the woman looked up from the counter and said, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, for that simple reason, I I'd be terrified to say, do you know who I am? We've got um, David Hasselhoff, um, the actor, was evicted from Wimbledon Tennis last year. Uh, he was drunk, 
And as he was, as he was being dragged away, he was heard to yell, Do you know who I am? I'm the Hoff. <laughs> What did they say, F? <laughs> <laughs> yes, F off, yes. Uh, <laughs> um, you mentioned the thing about, you know, the, the first hit record, Anyone Who Had a Heart, and that was a big sort of hit for you initially. But Howard, I mean, many people, of course, will, will know you from, you know, television, surprise, surprise, uh, and, and um, um, the other ones that you've done over the years, Blind Date and things like that. I just remembered it in time, didn't I? <laughs> just in time, just like that much. For 18 years, yeah. and you know, you notice I let you sweat. There. You did, yeah. <laughs> um, well, of course, still, you're known for all these shows that people can't forget. <laughs> Whatever they were. Um, but how did you say so you, you started? You know, those are very, very popular shows. Um, well, how did you start, though? Where were you when you first started your, your love of singing? Well, I, it was, call it the kitchen table in our front room, really. Yeah. Well, I just wanted to sing. Um, so you say, you, you yourself have said you, you've never sort of gone around saying, you know who I am. You, you've, ne you've never done I've that. I've never ever done that, mm -hmm. you know. And maybe a few people have used my name on yes, occasions yeah, yeah. to get in, but I've never, I've never ever done that. You've never ever said, you know who I am? I have, actually, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you're talking about, and this is probably one of the reasons why I've never done it. I'm on, on, on the Scylla shows, so the black and white telly, when I yes. used to go around the street saying, do you know who I am? And they never, ever did. We've got one of them. Here we are. <laughs> this is you in a supermarket. Excuse me, love, can you come and help me a minute? Uh, what's your grandson's name? Uh, Peter Anthony Black. Peter Anthony Black? Yeah. Oh, what a coincidence. Do you know who I am? No. Have a guess. Didn't you used to work in the sweet shop? <laughs> Oh, look at that. Before me nose job and everything. Was, I, I remember the nose job. That was quite publicised at the time, wasn't it? I went in on my birthday, on my 25th birthday, to have it done. Mm. So now, the new nose is older than the... Oh, no. <laughs> yes. I'm sorry I blew that for you. No, that's all right. You no really way. set me up, and you know you blew it as well because you, you have really never said that. <laughs> you should have really snuck that one in. <laughs> yeah, but we'll cut all that bit out. Oh, well, okay, so. <laughs> people say, you know, I was going to room 101. In they go. Oh, that's true, I that do. <laughs> <laughs> OK, here's our, um, our, our next prop here, Silla. So tell us what this is. It's a camera. It's a camera and it's a telephone yeah. and, yeah, and there's the flash there. Yes. So this is mobile phones that have cameras in them. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 I hate them. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I do. Because nobody asks for autographs anymore. They no. don't. All you see is this in front of your face. And they don't even have to... Well, they don't have to ask permission, yeah. but it would be nice if they said, oh... Silla, you know, give us a smile. I don't really take a good photograph anyway. Mm, mm. And I do remember on one occasion, <laughs> last year it was, but oh. I, went, I went to Paris with Sir Cliff Richard last year. <laughs> no, this year I went, yeah. So we were going on Eurostar and Cliff fell asleep mm -hmm. with his mouth open. Yeah. I thought, well, if you can do it. On the way, I didn't do it on the way there, I was mm. too excited, but mm. on the way back after the weekend, I thought, I'll have a little zizz. Mm. And then I get this phone call about five days later from my son, Robert, said, mm. you're in the Heat magazine with your mouth open. <laughs> 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 All asleep. And that was with a phone. I thought that was a bit unfair. Mm. You don't really want somebody phoning you up saying you're in Heat, do you? <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen the photograph? I've never seen the photograph. Yeah, no, I don't want to see the no, photograph. It's best to avoid these sort of things, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, this, and millions of people are going to see this. Well, no, dozens, no. dozens. <laughs> How bad do I look? Then? It doesn't look bad at all. If it looked really bad, we wouldn't show it. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes, you would. Do you really not want to see it? No. Okay, we won't see it then. Okay. OK, let's have a look at it then. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's all right. Yeah, but th don't you think that's unfair? Yes. 
it is a thing with the mobile cameras, you know, that so you can, so as you say, you know, on their phone, everybody's got a camera now. I mean, as a celebrity, you know, my days of whoring are well over. <laughs> <laughs> you just can't go out and do it anymore. But no, Dave, I know I'm now the, the... That was a joke, by the way. <laughs> I just see people saying, yeah, I always thought it. <laughs> <laughs> but now they can, it's the video as well. Yes, isn't it? yeah. You've got to behave yourself every time you're outside in well, public I do now. behave yeah. myself, mm. but I don't care. Well, nowadays people don't ask you to pose your photographs, they just take them, don't they? Uh, there is an art in posing for photographs, as Norman Wisdom demonstrates here in his film, Man of the Moment. Come out of it, I'll show you. Ah, very good, very good indeed. Now, No smiling, please. <laughs> Control yourself, please. I can't help it. The more you stop me, the more I seem to can't help it. <laughs> Pull yourself together. Go on. Go on. Now force yourself. Go on. Go on. Go on. Go on. Hilarious sequence, that. Hilarious. It is. Um, are, you, are you up with all the mobile phone technology, all the different things you can get now? The... Well, I am. I've got one of those fabulous phones, but I don't know how to use it. Well, the latest model here is the Motorola Razor phone. I don't know if you're familiar with this. There's the, um, there's the phone bit of it there, obviously. And uh, there's the camera bit there. And then um, the Razor bit is just there, look. So you see oh, go... <laughs> So, you know, you've got everything you possibly need. Um, well, normally I would put this into room 101, but I, I think... I know, I know what you're going to say. What am I going to say? You're not going to put it in, are you? Well, it's, it's such a beautiful prop, this one here. <laughs> that's fabulous. That's lovely. I think I might take it home myself. Well, that's great. You know, if they had that, because, you see, that's heavy. Yeah. And, you know, they would have to make an effort. But yes. a mobile phone, they don't have to do zilch. I wasn't going to put it in because it's a very good prop, but then, as you say, it is quite heavy, so I want to hear what sort of noise it makes as it disappears into room 101 <laughs> and it goes. <laughs> Doing well. You're doing well. Okay, so um, so here we are, Silla. Yes, unwrapped food. Unwrapped food, yes, yeah. and all that. You know, when it's offered to you, you know. Oh no, I don't. In we've restaurants got, and bars yeah. and stuff like that. We've got I cheesy can't. pineapple. We got sort of no. imperial mint things. There ain't things. nothing that's going in my mouth that is not wrapped. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Does it, have to, Not... does it have to be boiled first? <laughs> well, you know what I'm talking about. I know, about. Yeah, I think I, I do. Mean, I, I hope I do. I didn't really appreciate, and I only found this out quite recently. Uh huh. Because, I mean, I'd be, I'm anything for a freebie. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. after eight mints or mint imperials or nuts or anything like that, mm -hmm. until somebody said, you know, guys go, and a lot of guys don't wash their hands mm -hmm. afterwards. Mm -hmm. So. Not a good thing. So then come out and put the hands in the mints. That's and, right, that's mm. right. What about, what's your feelings on it then? Well, I mean, you know... I mean, do you wash your hands when you go... Yeah, there? I do, yeah. But, you know, after you've had a few beers, a couple of, <laughs> a couple of pissy mints, you don't care, you know. <laughs> 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 well, it's, it's, it's guys you like you. You've just been to the loo, George. <laughs> Whenever you eat in a restaurant, um, you, and you're in the hands, of course, of the, you know, literally almost in the hands of the staff that work there, and according to this survey that was done recently, 53% um, don't wash their hands before working with food. That, you didn't you want know, to know that, did you? That's why I've never, ever complained in a restaurant. I've never sent anything back, ever. What are you, what are you worried about if you do? Well, because they might gob on it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they can, or they might take the steak off and, you yeah. know, dance on it on the floor yeah. and, you know... They could, and I'm sure they do. So yeah. I've never ever. I say it's lovely. Especially with the soup, you just think it's more than this when I saw it last time. <laughs> uh, exactly. So you wouldn't be, you'd be a bit worried about doing that, yes? No, um, I, I just would never do that. You know, I wouldn't complain in a restaurant well, anyway. You're quite adventurous with some of the food you eat, aren't you? Let's have a, we've, have a look at this clip here. Oh, okay. 
I helped myself to an orange and I helped myself to an OXO cube. I guess I was so eager to eat the orange and the OXO that it all blended into one. And I thought, oh, I like this. And that, doesn't that look fabulous? Um, and this is my, and I started eating it. Mmm. Mmm. Well, mm. how long That's have you been doing that, Oxo Cube and oranges? Uh, do you know I've just started again? Oh, I will do it. I've got one here. I'm not a problem. And I'll, I'll try one if you want to oh, if you can you? prepare it's one. It's great because Is it's it? like the sweet and sour thing. I don't know what it's going to do with my lipstick, but still. Okay, so you, um, and you can, cr you know, the best thing is to get it. Look at that. Doesn't that look fantastic? Um. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, it's me. Mm. Mm. I'll get you a cloth. Oh, that's it. Shall I do you one? Yes, please. It's sort of like sweet and sour. Uh huh. This is great. From okay. my childhood. Yeah. Especially when I'll. Mm. <laughs> okay. What? <laughs> that is oxo on orange. <laughs> It's great. It's great. You know, I was a kid at school, and you know when you come home, you're starving. I mean, Mum had a stall in the market. Was it an Oxo's orange stall? <laughs> no, no. no, no, no. So, you know, as kids, you know, there's fruit. I love oranges and, and the Oxo cube, and I thought, mm. what am mm. I going to do first? Mm. I thought I'll mix it both together. And it was fabulous. Yeah, it was yeah. great. I don't know. I don't think I can put unwrapped food into Room 101. What? You don't mind... Whatever men do in loos and then come and eat your unwrapped food, then. That could have been me talking. <laughs> um, all right, well, I'll tell you what, then, as it's you, um, it going into room 101, in they go. Oh, <laughs> okay, uh, what, Silla, what does this represent here? Well, I think they do an incredible job, her hostess. Yeah, yeah. But it, do, it does represent um, my fear of flying, I'm yes, afraid. Yes. Uh -huh. And. Um, you know, the safety procedures. All right, so the emergency procedures that they go yes, through on aeroplanes. Uh, you yeah. know, my bottle totally goes, and it mm. doesn't get easier as time goes on, really. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I know it all back to front now. So there's all the thing about sort of following the lines in the well, plane they, and the they, lights. Well, they, they start with the emergency exit. Mm. Now, that's not very comforting, sitting on a plane, <laughs> is it? You know, and they go... The, that way, and the two there. Would you prefer it if they said there are no emergency exits? <laughs> I would prefer it if they said nothing at all. And, yes. say, and you know, if the captain came on and mm. said, I am, I'm going to get you to where mm. you want to go safely. Mm. That's what I want. I you... don't want in case of emergency. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, let's have a look at uh, a captain uh, talking to uh, the passengers on board a plane. This is some okay. of the tricks they can get up to. I know what. What? Hello? Uh, this is your captain speaking. There is absolutely no cause for a laugh. That'll get them thinking. Uh, no, 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 not yet, not yet. Let it sink in. They're thinking, uh, what is there absolutely no cause for alarm about? Are the wings on fire? The wings are not on fire. <laughs> Now they're thinking, uh, why should he say that? So we say... Oh, oh, how are we doing? They've stopped eating, looking a bit worried. Good. <laughs> Hang on, one of them's going to the washroom. Is he there yet? He's just closing the door. Now! Right. One, two, three... Please return to your seats and fasten your safety belts immediately, please. <laughs> yes? Here he comes, going up the aisle like the clippers. <laughs> It's uh, John Cleese, Grand Chapman and I Michael know, Palin. But right? I know that feeling well when I have been in, mm -hmm. you know, spending a penny in the loo. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the, all of a sudden the turbulence happens yes. and it's really not nice. But the emergency procedures are there to sort of protect us, I suppose, aren't they? That's the but, idea yes, they, that... They're only doing the job, God yeah, love them. Yeah. But, you know, it uh, just puts the willies up me. Yeah, it does seem to be a strange uh, sort of setup where you say, well, here's an emergency landing, mm -hmm. um, this is your life jacket, here's a yeah. little whistle to attract That's attention. Right. Yeah, exactly. To attract attention, like a 747 crashing into the sea, <laughs> nobody will notice that. <laughs> but they hear a whistle. What the hell is that over there? Well, this is it, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. Isn't it? No, is it? no, we've got to put them into room 101. All that, 
emergency procedure yes. because it all goes out the window anyway. Yeah, yeah. You're gonna well, go you go out the window. That's not one thing. You know those life jackets they have. Yeah, have you I know ever them been, well. Have you ever been tempted to sort of like have a go? No, at them? not at all. Really? But I know how to put one on and how to work it. Well, here we are. Let's have a look. We've got um, we've got a couple here. Oh, That's wow. A, if you want to grab that one. All right. Yeah. See if um, okay. so you know how to do all the straps up and everything. Well, I mean, you, well, it's going to ruin my hairdo, isn't it? Well, no, you can't ruin. Really. But where are the straps? Oh, here are the straps. With and then when, Paul, you've got it on back. Oh, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't and matter remotely. You've got to do that. Yes. Really uh -huh. hard tug uh -huh. to get this in place, uh -huh. which obviously I'm not doing. But I think right. you pull that yellow. Yeah, if you put, if it's, is it that you pull? I've forgotten how to. Do it. This is your whistle, isn't it? Yeah. Well, I can Yeah, and then you... Right. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, that's to inflate. That's oh, is it? If it okay, where's the whistle? Uh, let's have it. I'll take it off. Hang on. Where's the whistle? How the hell am I going to get this Oh, I'm kidding. Where's the whistle? Where's the whistle? Is that the whistle, then? Does it, does it blow? <laughs> let's have a look. <laughs> this, remember, you're in the sea while you're looking I... for this whistle. <laughs> I can't find well, a whistle. Now I know how Jordan feels now. <laughs> um, well, I can't find a whistle, but it doesn't matter. You can... Oh, there we are. Listen, that's... let's hear that again. <laughs> okay, so if we get rid of those. I don't know how to get rid of them. Can I help you? Well, we better like do this here. I'll have a go. <laughs> that's in this first. There. Yeah. That's it. Great. You see, how could you put me through that? Well, it's, you know, if you're going to put it on, it might as well be in a TV studio rather than on an aeroplane. <laughs> well, now I know, don't yeah, I? Get rid of that. So you know how to work in case oh, of a, a, an emergency. Um, I don't think I can... Oh, now, come on, Paul. Well, I was going to say, I don't think I can keep them out of Room 101. So I think airline safety procedures are definitely going into Room 101. In they go! <laughs> Um, we mentioned weather forecasters earlier. It could be said that some of them use it as a route into show business. Unfortunately, this is what happens when they get there. Until the next time, good night. So, Lord, when deciding what weather's in store, could you check what we told them the evening before? Then stick to our forecast, we'll help with our task. And at last we can bring them whatever they ask. We have sunshine in Manchester for nine months a year. The farmers, of course, will have nothing to fear. They'll have rain when they want it and sun on request. So keep watching the telly, Lord, and we. <laughs>